Um, so the next session is on, called Clinical Trials, Past, Present, and Future. And um, we're doing this session because we think one way to empower patients is to give them information and knowledge. So we wanted to share um, information about what is going on in clinical trials in NF in the past, some of the successes that we've had, um, what's ongoing, and then trials that are planned for the future. So it's really kind of like a brief snapshot of what's going on in clinical trials, like clinical trials speed dating. Um, so we're going to have um, every speaker is going to do 10 minutes and allow for a few minutes of questions. But then at the very end, we'll have time, you know, for more questions. So, um, you know, to give really a discussion period at the very end. So first we'll have um, a talk about the clinical trials for plexiform neurofibromas and then um, uh, dermal neurofibromas, um, NF2, bone, and neurocognitive trials. So the first speaker is Brigitte Wiedemann, and she is the, uh, a pediatric oncologist and the ch chief of the pediatric oncology branch in the at the National Cancer Institute, and she leads the NF clinical trials research program there, which is developing new treatments for um, neurofibromas and particularly plexiform neurofibromas. So welcome to Dr. Brigitte Wiedemann. Good morning. I, I would like to thank um, the organizers to have me here. When I saw that Pam has like five speakers in one hour, I thought, how are we going to do this? I've worked 15 years or so in clinical trials, but, but we'll, I will make it work. So this is going to be brief, but I'm, I'm really excited to, to be here today. Um, one word of background, what are plexiform neurofibromas? These are non-cancer tumors, but we cannot really call them benign because they can cause many problems. They can arise from any nerve in the body, occur in up to 50% of people with NF1, and can cause uh, pain, functional loss, disfigurement. They can cause airway problems, and importantly, they can also transform to become aggressive cancers, usually later in life. And when we started the work, as many others, there were no effective medical therapies. We do know in part and have learned a lot of what makes these tumors um, develop and grow. Um, and it is really, this is a slide I borrowed from Andrea Grow. it's like a light switch. Um, NF1, when it's mutated, causes a protein called the RAS protein to be upregulated. And this results in signaling cascades like the RAF, MEK, MAP kinase pathway or the PI3 kinase mTOR pathway to be activated and signals um, tumor formation. So to go real brief through, I think, highlights of what has happened past, present, and future, in order to develop effective treatments, we need to understand the natural history of these tumors. And in the past, this was really largely unknown. At this point, I think we know a lot about the growth rate of these tumors, and we also have identified another tumor, ANF, or atypical neurofibroma, as the precursor lesion for MPNST, I'll show you the data, but for the future, we want to have means that predict what will happen to a patient early on so that we can make treatments um, available and prevention strategies. We measure these tumors with MRI, and many of you or your uh, family members had MRIs. And so in the past, we did line measurements, like we measured the largest dimension, but this was not sensitive. And Many of the radiologists would say, no change, no change, no change. We needed a better method to measure these tumors. And by using volumetric MRI analysis, which we have now, we can really measure the growth of these tumors. But it's time sensitive. So for the future, I would like to see a fast and reliable method that can be done in many clinics so that we can follow patients and develop better therapy. We need functional outcome measures and patient-reported outcome measures to get drugs to the market because the FDA will not approve a, a drug just because it shrinks a tumor. They want to see that something gets better. And in the past, we really didn't have any of these outcome measures. Currently, thanks to the work of RAINS and, and many in this group, we have outcome measures that are selected and are used in clinical trials. And the patients actually go through all these measures to help us measure the benefit Ultimately, our goal is to have validated measures. That means the FDA says, if this gets better, independent of what anything else shows, we get this drug approved. Preclinical and biological understanding. In the past, we did not have relevant models that could tell us 
in preclinical like mouse models, is this a drug that may work? At this point in time, we do have these models, not only mouse models, that can be used in preclinical trials to tell us what may work in patients. For the future, we would like to have additional models that may tell us when a tumor becomes more aggressive, and we would also like to have cheaper high-throughput methods that would allow us to identify the best drug combinations. And then finally, you know, trials that work. In the past, we really, I would say, had none. At this point, we have several drugs that shrink tumors and can improve pain and function, but we do not eradicate tumors. And when we stop the medicine, many times the tumors grow back. What we want for the future is FDA-approved drugs. We want to see near complete and sustained shrinkage of tumors. And ideally, we want to prevent plexiform neurofibromas. So I'll show you a few of the, of the highlights of the work that you know, have re resulted in advances. The first is a volumetric MRI analysis, and this was largely done by Dr. Dombey, where we measure the volume of the tumors. It's a lot of work, but we get really, really good results. And with that, and this is slightly more complicated, this slide, we were able to characterize the growth of plexiform neurofibromas and of a different type of tumor called atypical neurofibroma. So if you look at the left uh, lower border, what you see is the age in years and percent change on the y-axis in growth per year. And you see the yellow dots, the youngest patients have the most rapidly growing tumors for typical plexiforms. And in older patients, we really don't see much growth. Um, if you look at the right-sided panel for atypical neurofibromas, those grow independent of age. They grow pretty much all the time, so their biology is different. And up on the upper panel, you see a neck plexiform neurofibroma on MRI. And where the red arrow goes, you see like a nodule that gets larger over time in the surrounding plexiform that is unchanged. And this tumor is an atypical neurofibroma that develops. And we can now, by MRI, identify these lesions. And they may respond differently to MEK inhibitors. So that's a very important observation. And our next goal will have to be to develop better treatments not only for the plexiforms, but for the atypical neurofibromas. Very importantly, I think a lot of advances um, in development of patient-reported outcomes and functional outcomes has been made by RAINS, the Response Evaluation in Neurofibromatosis and Schwannomatosis International Working Group that was spearheaded by Scott Plotkin, I think, in 2011. So it's been an, it's been an effort for years, but many of you participate in this now. We have a number of working groups that you see, from patient reported to functional outcomes, imaging. And most importantly, uh, over the last one and a half years, um, Dr. Plotkin and others have worked on having patient representatives on board, which will be critical in advancing this forward. The FDA knows about RAINS, and they uh, really, I think, value the efforts of RAINS. And so I'm, I'm very, very excited to be part of this effort. To show you an example for the preclinical models, there are other investigators, but this shows a mouse model of NF1 um, that we have used in collaboration with Cincinnati Children's to test effective drugs. So in the left upper panel, you see a mouse neurofibroma. In the middle panel, you see an MRI of a mouse neurofibroma. And on the right upper panel, you see an MRI of a human neurofibroma. So you see they actually look quite similar. And then on the left lower panel, you see the natural history of mouse neurofibromas with MRI. Each dot is an MRI study. And you can see that just like in people, the mouse neurofibromas grow. And then on the right lower panel, you see what we call a waterfall plot, where each, each bar is a mouse tumor. And you can see that mice that don't have treatment in white have tumors that grow and mice that have treatment go down, that means they shrink. And what was really interesting for us was that MEK inhibitors were the first in these preclinical trials to show an effect. And this gives us a hope that these preclinical models can be useful to predict what works in people. Um, so, so here comes the, the, the first, in my mind, success in most of the patients of the MEK inhibitor salumetinib. It was a phase one study where we tried to identify what the best dose is to give patients. But in every patient that we treated, again, you see this waterfall plot, it goes down. And that means there was tumor shrinkage in pretty much every patient. But what we call a partial response, meaning 20% or more decrease, was in 70% of the patients. And then on the right lower panel, 
you see the improvement in disfigurement and the shrinkage on MRI. And you can also see in the graph the dots, the gray dots, you know, how the tumor was growing before the MEK inhibitor and how the MEK inhibitor slowed it down and shrank the tumors. So this was really for us a, a first time true success in many patients. And we completed a phase two study that um, is a study that will hopefully look at the effect um, more objectively with patient reported outcomes. The other thing that we saw is that we did not see tumor progression. This is what we call a Kaplan-Meier curve. Ideally, you don't want to, see, you want to see the straight white line that you see for salumetanib. That means nobody has tumor progression. And you see comparison trials where we did see tumor progression. So there are a number of clinical trials that have identified active agents. The first one was imatinib. It's um, a, a KIT inhibitor in uh, Wade Klapp's group in Indiana um, for small plexiforms of the airway. Salumetanib, we are doing a, what we call a phase two registration trial, and I want to thank everybody who has participated because the patients go through a lot of measures, functional patient reported outcomes, photography. Um, we also have an adult study of salumetanib, and as um, was mentioned earlier, the DOD sponsored clinical trials consortium is critical. They also did a study with another MEK inhibitor that showed activity. And then there's another drug called cabozantinib that has multiple targets where also activity is seen. So there are additional trials in development, and I have the hope that we'll come up with additional important clinical trials that show activity. Um, the Children's Tumor Foundation has been engaged from the very beginning in all of this and supported this, and then NTAP provides specific support for plexiform neurofibromas. But I really want to emphasize, without you, you, uh, you know, patients and families, none of this would have happened. And if and when we get a drug for approval, it's really largely due to your efforts. So thank you very much. Thank you.